Hey everyone, Alexi Talanda here, and welcome to our bonus content as we work on putting Ostium Season 6 together. We're continuing with our Behind the Ostium series as we go in-depth with the making and discussion of how each episode of Ostium came to be, as well as much more. I am joined by Dwayne Farver, a big fan of the show and creator of the spin-off podcast, Manifestations. If you enjoy the Behind the Ostium series, you can get full access to over 50 episodes right now by supporting Team Ostium on Patreon at patreon.com slash ostiumpodcast. You'll also get access to a bunch of other bonus content on there too. Once again, that's patreon.com slash ostiumpodcast. We'll continue working on getting Ostium Season 6 ready for release in 2022, but for now, sit back and enjoy another episode of Behind the Ostium. All righty, let's move on to episode 32. Two can be as bad as one, which is, I believe, the second lyric in the One is the Loneliest Number song, for obvious reasons, as we get to now hear from Jake and Dave. So we kick off the episode, again, with a particular piece of music for um, each character. For Jake, it's going to be guitar music for Dave, it's going to be piano music to kind of separate them out so you know clearly who's who. So we start the episode with Jake kind of reconciling with what he did in creating this door and having then him and Dave go through it. Um, He'd over the end of the last season kind of discovered the kind of abilities he had as he was trying them out and being able to create these doors and go through places. And yes, there had been that one they'd gone through him and Dave um, back on Roanoke, but that felt different because it was actually still in the world of Ostium, so to speak. And then he'd sent those um, security people through their door, but for all he knew, they could have ended up anywhere. He didn't actually know for sure where they ended up. Whereas now it was a you know, kind of life and death situation. He had to quickly do it and focus on what he was doing and that it really had brought them through to where he wanted them to go ultimately. And so it's kind of like a, almost a shock to him to some way to, to realize what he can do and kind of what the power he now has that is growing within him as he becomes more connected to Ostium like everyone is. Um, but also having him admitting how terrified he is too of what they just went through um, and what they kind of have to deal with now that it's all new. Um, they're in this place all alone again. Um, nothing is ever certain. He never feels, um, he sometimes he can feel confident, but for the most part, doesn't always feel very confident and is always kind of in question of everything and never sure what is going to happen next. Um, the music again, helped to kind of decompress is um, <clears throat> what I would use for, Definitely for the last episode and for this episode, um, after everything they've all gone through, you kind of almost get a moment to relax for the characters, for them to kind of process what they've gone through, think about it, work it out in their mind. But also it kind of gives almost the listener, especially if they've been marathoning the seasons, to kind of go with the intenseness of the last you know, finale and then now to kind of get a chance to relax a bit and unwind a little. Um, again, I found with the music for jake and dave it had these strange little pauses in it that worked really well for strong moments important moments as the character was relating them i did have them kind of almost right away get into an intense scene with each other jake and dave um as they're kind of admitting to what they've had to face and kind of how they deal with it what they're going to do next and this was um i kind of had multiple points for this one it was a chance to kind of get them to separate a little bit and to have them start kind of recording their own viewpoints and and thoughts of what they're going through, how they're processing all this. It would have just felt too weird if they were together having it bounce back and forth because they've both had gone through so much that they needed their own time and kind of um, privacy to, to process it and kind of go through it all. But it also showed that, you know, what they went through had been really intense and that they needed some personal space to to help themselves feel better and to to still kind of work out what it was that had really happened i mean it all kind of happened so fast and they described it to some extent but it's one thing to kind of say what it was but to actually like comprehend it and go through it mentally takes some time the fun thing with having them each 
have their own little parts with Jake doing his, you know, processing story, and then um, St- uh, Dave doing his. That uh, we kind of get to see while well, they've kind of gone through lately the same events with the finale. Um, you kind of get to see how they process it in different ways as they are different people. With um, Jake being a little more confident this time because of what he's gone through and become stronger from it, whereas Dave has um, isn't as sure of himself because he's gone through so much and just feels like he's kind of being dragged along to some extent and doesn't really know what's going to happen next. So he's less certain and less sure-footed. And then Steve uh, Dave starts to really hard with the Steve Dave thing. <laughs> Dave starts to um, start to rec- have these strange feelings of recollection about this place. Um, he does talk about a trip he did when he was younger, when he went to Gibraltar. This was kind of fun because as someone who grew up in the South coast of Spain, I went to Gibraltar a few times, a number of times in my life. So it was fun to kind of pull this out of my past and go through all the details of that. And we also have D- uh, Dave going through heavy mental stuff as he starts to remember his past, but he can't quite remember why, can't figure out why he's remembering it, why it's coming back to him that, you know, what's going on. It feels very fractured, piecemeal, like, I mean, possibly to some extent, like he might be losing his mind a little bit at first because he doesn't understand what he's going through and why bits of this is seeming familiar to him. You know, it's almost like he's getting some other person's thoughts and recollections that he knows aren't his, but then at the same time, he knows they are his too, but how can he reconcile that? So it's sort of him going through his own kind of path there of working out what is going on, what is happening to him. So at this point, Dwayne, did you have any idea what Dave might have been going through or where he might have been coming from? Honestly, no. Um, It was pretty obvious that Dave had been there before. Mm -hmm. And and I wrote a a comment here to, to sort of made me think back to when I first listened to it that he had like memories that were like Swiss cheese, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but good description. But but were the holes real? Or was the cheese real? <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, like you like you were saying, he was remembering things that didn't happen to him, but he knows they did. So were his existing memories fake, or were these new memories fake? And where was he getting them from? What you know, was it truly something here triggering a memory? Or it, I was uh, almost positive that somehow someone was inserting memories in into Dave. Um, so that seems like you, a pretty visible storyline for that. Yeah, for all these questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you as the writer were the one doing it, of course. Literally, um, yes. <laughs> um, Typing. But the I, words. I did. I did. I did also make the comment. I wrote down that Jake does seem uh, more confident and more able. Mm-hmm. Um, um, not so. He doesn't really. I still think. I still don't think at this point he really truly understands his new none of us do really thing <laughs> as but, i keep saying but yeah but he's but he's more confident yeah. in them uh, in, a, in, in, in video game parlance he leveled up <laughs> <laughs> exactly um the uh the thing with dave uh i, I don't want to i know we're going to get there and everybody's probably already listened to it already and we've already slipped up a few times <laughs> um but I, yeah, that that wasn't anything that I saw coming. Um, cool. Okay. Not at this point. Yeah. Not at this point. All right. Um, so one other big difference this time, too, is that um, we actually have Dave and Jake together going through this together, um, which is kind of a little different as opposed to the person being on their own and having to deal with all this stuff alone and feeling kind of helpless. It's kind of fun for them to have someone to bounce off ideas to to kind of work together on stuff and feel like you have a partner here who can kind of help you get through stuff um and you kind of get to see again as i said um different ways with how they're tackling this um with jake he's describing how things look um using lots of details as he likes to do whereas with dave um he gives basically just the basics. He doesn't go into too much detail like Jake loves to de- describe stuff, um, which kind of helped me make this seem like 
a no, like not like a normal place, but something more futuristic, getting me give me a chance because Jake is you know a sci-fi fan, getting to see all this cool sci-fi tech around him and want to describe it in immense detail that um, he didn't you know he put that all in there, whereas um, Dave didn't need to. Um, and it also gave me a chance to kind of really world build for the Ostium Network here, which I had fun with. Did you enjoy it, Dwayne? Dwayne? Yeah, immensely. Um, the uh, the one of the things that Jake mentioned is about the different materials. Mm -hmm. There's a, a glass like material. It's yep. like glass, but not. And I'm like that. Yeah, that fits with Ostium uh, <laughs> for sure. Uh, not just that it's futuristic, yeah. but that they they would have. Um, and I believe one of the characters even mentions it. Um, they didn't really change Gibraltar all that much, mm -hmm. but they built on it and yes. they brought other right. things there. So it's a really um, eclectic mix of what we would consider contemporary mm -hmm. to us and very futuristic. Um, so in my mind, that was a very interesting place to to visit. To kind of play with. And I think it was just me as writing it because it was a place I did have in my mind because I've been to Gibraltar, but I also wanted to make it that it's not Gibraltar, it's the Austin Network, so it's going to be different and, and unusual. But yeah, still keeping things like the, the street names I think I kept and things like that, yeah. And then um, I also have the big reveal that this Gibraltar is not like other Gibraltars because it is an island. Shocking. <laughs> uh, to really separate it out from making it clear this is like no other Gibraltar ever. And we didn't cover that with Monica because she didn't need that revelation. Yeah, right. Um, but Jake does need that revelation and uh, Dave needed it to jog some memories. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think I mentioned it before and I didn't write a note here, but I will say now. So the Gibraltar Island idea I originally had in a... Um, novella slash book i was working on which was kind of a post-apocalyptic book story um my it was it might still happen one day it's going to be called the four horsemen and it's going to be four different kind of post-apocalyptic stories set well they're not they might be connected i don't know yet might be a connector ostium for all i know but anyway uh, <laughs> um but they were all kind of standalone novellas and then so one of them was set in gibraltar and i wrote like it was like a ninety-five thousand word book i wrote and that um one of the events that did happen it where because these people were experiencing an end of the world event they didn't know what they were going to have to face what you know, what bad stuff might happen so they ended up blowing up like with explosives and making gibraltar an island because you can do it because they basically have the airport that kind of runs through it and you can just blow this huge part of it up technically and then you would make gibraltar an island with this sense, that's much more of a separate island in its own kind of dimensions is a lot different. But I stole that from that novella and stuck it in here because it felt like it was a really good fit for for what I wanted to do with it. And I still gave it its own tweaks and stuff. It's a very good uh, way to recycle an idea. Mm -hmm. So I just have a note here again, um, with them being together, they get to kind of work with each other and help each other. But at the same time, they also have to work with each other and get each other to agree with their own ideas and opinions. Um, and again, I had a little bit of this with anger between them as they're sniping back at each other because of what they've gone through, but also as this place that they thought they knew, but clearly don't really. And that when you're on your own, you have yourself and are less likely to argue with yourself and you can figure things out for your own and have your own opinions. Whereas there's someone else there, you might have to either convince them or help them to be on your side and learn how to work together, which they hadn't really done before. So again, this is separating it, making it different from previous episodes and this new kind of paradigm here and having them kind of learn to work together. They also, I mean, yes, they know of each other for some time, but they haven't really, you know, been hanging out together for much time at all. So they're just kind of getting to know each other and become friends. They uh, haven't really had a chance to interact mm -hmm. under a, a non-stressful <laughs> Under situation. a normal chill, yeah. <laughs> Kind of like I mean, uh, I, like twenty four, where he never Jack Jack Bauer never gets a chance to relax, and that was always a, a friend's comment that she, he just wants to see him like go to the bathroom or sit down and eat a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, like 
with the previous episode, we have the big boom again. Same sound. Um, again, setting this off that creating a link between this episode and the previous episode and making you think, hey, this is possibly the same Ostium network then potentially with the same sound happening, um, which was my intention with that. And also to use it as kind of a um, timing or counting device. This gets used quite often, well, not very often, but a number of times in um, science fiction because there's a cool little device to kind of either set up a, a countdown for a possible revelation that's going to have to come, kind of a Chekhov's gun in some ways, or um, just an idea of linking certain things together. Um, I actually originally first read about this um, in a college class when I was reading um, the book Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, where Big Ben chimes a certain number of times throughout the book. And because it's a um, stream of consciousness book, things are all happening at different times and it's not chronological in any way. But because you have Big Ben going off every once in a while, you can kind of tell what time it is and and what's you know how it kind of fits together. So that was kind of my little bit of intention with with this the booming as almost working like a ticking clock of impending doom. Um so Dwayne at this point did you think uh Jake and Dave were in the same place as Monica? I would say yes. And my question um would be was the sound Jake and Dave heard from the same source of whatever the sound Monica heard was, or was it the same sound? Did Monica hear that sound and now Jake and Dave are hearing that same sound because we're not, because they're not connected or whatever. Yeah. They're, they're you know, we're not hearing their stories simultaneously. Yeah. So we're, we're a little disjointed time-wise yes. and are they catching up to where Monica was in the story? Or is this like you were saying first, a countdown? Because yeah. I was going to write down number one <laughs> and number two. Yeah. And I'm like, that may not be number two. That may be number one again. Exactly. So so, so basically, yeah. yes, that was my intention was to, to kind of give you some of this confusion that you're doing too. But ultimately, it was exactly the same sound they were hearing at the same time in their different spots. And you'll notice as we go through the episodes, if you see where they are, um, as the sound goes off, they're kind of, they're in, in some places like the restaurant, they're in places that they've actually been in at the, um, each been in, but they're not in there at the same time, which is why you still can't definitively say this is, ex they're in the same place, Monica and Jake are together or, and that, um, that they're definitely going to meet. You just don't know. The mystery. <laughs> that, that's a that's a good that's a good way to to. I I wouldn't have come up with that. Mm -hmm. I, I went for the obvious that <laughs> they are in the same place, but yeah, just because they're um they're in the same town does not mean they're in the same town. We know <laughs> Ostium can do things like that. <laughs> that is that's a. I think I should get that on a T-shirt, <laughs> which definitely sums up Ostium. <laughs> they're in the same town, but they're not in the same town. <laughs> of course, it's same town. <laughs> Depends on where you put the emphasis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or in Fosses. Yeah. <laughs> but at the end, we do find um, when they're in the restaurant, mm -hmm. um, Dave finds the packaging from Monica's chicken. Right. So I'll so get to that, that in a second. I'm still working through my oh, notes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry about uh, that. So as they hear this boom, Steve kind of just cracks a little. Because, again, he's gone through so much and still hasn't really had a chance to kind of process everything. And he's kind of new to the world of Ostium where crazy stuff happens all the time. While Jake is a little more, uh, I wouldn't say necessarily calm, but able to deal with it better. Um, because he has gone through, you know, giant earthquakes, disconnecting from the world, you know, all these different things that he's gone through. So... A giant sonic boom seems almost like, you know, not minor, but it's dealable for him. <laughs> um, but then again, with the two of them being there, much like um, in the first episode of season two, where you had Jake and Monica um, dealing with being untethered together, it really helps when you have someone to share the burden and stress. Um I was also given the chance here, and I think I made the point too, of um, 
when Dave was talking with Jake and, and they were saying they wanted to do their own recordings, whether they wanted to go their separate ways. And there was an opportunity here to really have each character kind of just go off on their own literal you know, route they wanted to go and what they wanted to do and things and kind of go, you know, almost like the horror moved around of, well, let's split up and cover more ground, you know, and then <laughs> one or two of them die. <laughs> so, but um, I knew for this, it, it wasn't going to work that way. I wanted to keep them together and work on this together. Um, when they go and see the doc, um, and again, we talked a bit about the doc. So in the um, season three finale, as Jake is like barely able to keep it together as he's come through, he sees a boat. And then um, with this, him returning here to the dock, there is no boat. So I will admit this was a plot error that I initially made, but I have since kind of turned it around and made it um, a plot point that will kind of be revealed further down the line that ties it with Ostium. So there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when they go to the same restaurant as where potentially where Monica was or a different Monica, um, you kind of get to see again, a different viewpoint with them, you know, going in there, what they're seeing because Monica has been through a lot of this before. She's only going to give you a few little details, but it's not going to be that big of a deal. Whereas for Jake, it's all new. Um, Dave, to some extent too, as he's recalling stuff, but especially Jake. So you're going to get a lot more detail and, and kind of, um, tactile stuff of what's going on, what it all looks like, and how he thinks it works. Exactly. Uh, Monica didn't give us a lot of detail mm -hmm. about the restaurant, um, but with Jake being there, we we found out a lot mm -hmm. about, um, well, with Dave as well, I guess Dave yeah. is the one that uh, eventually finds the date. Right. Um, the eat by date on the food. <laughs> I did have some fun with uh, when them doing their meal of just uh, making them talk with accents and then having us <laughs> voice actors have fun with that little little humor there, yeah. Um, and then again, also with this is a this is a restaurant where you get food and stuff, but it's a restaurant on the Ostium Network, so it's going to be futuristic and different and having fun again, doing a little bit of world building within the restaurant of how these things might work. Um, doing some nice sound design with the sound of everything still running, even though there's no one here. And then, as you say, yes, the eat by date, which is kind of the big finale bomb show at the end of um, what it might mean. You know, it tells them that someone else has been here and they have no clue who it is, whereas the listener has some idea. The, um, the eat by date is very interesting <laughs> especially like uh, I, the, like the doors um when they open it uh, almost mm -hmm. sounds like the place is hermetically sealed yeah you know like so that even though time has passed it probably looks pristine because there's no dust from outside yeah. getting in right things like that mm -hmm. um i think that again, was partly very... me writing it in wanting to be so that i wouldn't have them come into a horrible dirty restaurant but still be able to eat there <laughs> but also i feel it it fits with the Ostium Network modus operandi of we want everything to be awesome. Think, you know, Elon Musk, 40 layers of train tracks below LA or whatever BS that you think. But, um, <laughs> but you know, pulling out all the stops, as they say, you know, no, you know, no cost is too much and making everything as, and also that when they were, they, the big whoever's creating this place, um, you know, they had ideas of what they wanted to do with it, but they, they didn't know what ultimately would could, could potentially happen. And so they wanted to make things as safe as possible, potentially things like making this be a sealed containment thing so that now where whatever event has happened 10 years ago, where there's now no one, it's still totally viable and usable as a restaurant for food. They seem, and, and this is not a dig, this is not bad. Uh, <laughs> they seem very... Um, like the people are very contingent minded. Mm -hmm. They, they, they haven't just, oh, well, we're going to do. You mean this. almost like they have and no idea what the hell they're doing. And so they want to cover their asses. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> or, or they have a very specific idea of what is possible, mm -hmm. what could happen. And they've built all of those contingencies in, um, in, in a very kind of, uh, 
lost kind of way right mm-hmm. where it's like why is this here there's a reason yeah we're not telling you but right. there is a reason yes and that's perfect because again i feel unlike lost i will give you the answers it will take time <laughs> and it is all interconnected and there are reasons uh, and i promise you will get them unlike lost where you just get screwed <laughs> <laughs> I- <laughs> But I feel like, too, like, with what we've learned already up to this point of the Austin Network and stuff, it kind of makes sense that they are being like this because they have screwed up a number of times and stuff has happened which they never could have expected or predicted. And so they've had to kind of be just overprepared in some ways. Exactly. The fact that they even had a a barracks is, now that I'm thinking about it, kind of odd. Mm -hmm. They knew they were going to need one. Um, I don't know if I'm picking at any future threads, but um... I'm not writing anything down. <laughs> <laughs> but also, yeah. I mean, there's the story of, you know, you, you sure you can retire eventually from the Austin network and go back to whatever you're from and you have a nice big bank account. But we don't know anyone who's had that and lived to tell the tale. <laughs> and that way, it's kind of like the TV show, The Prisoner, mm-hmm. a little bit. <laughs> the um the season uh, like i've mentioned it before it seems like a mystery mm-hmm. but it's not a it's not um it's not a mystery that you're hiding from us it's almost right. like you're giving us the mystery and everything's kind of there in plain sight uh, as uh, most mysteries are once you get to the end of the book you look back and you're like oh yeah of yeah, course yeah. that was obvious but um but yeah it's it's not a well, it's more of a, I feel like it's more of a mystery for the characters, but not necessarily so much for the listener. It, exactly. That's a very and, good, yeah. that's a very good way to put it. We're, we're in on the joke as a yeah. listener. We're, mm-hmm. we're, we're in on it. Um, yeah, that's a very good way to put it. And I did, I wanted to make it kind of a little bit obscure so that you might think maybe they are in the same place. Maybe they're not to pose these questions in your mind, but not make it seem like, oh, there's no chance this is going to be a, what, you know, you want to put the little things there to, to make you think that and know one way or the other potentially you know down the line but um not being sure you know um just being able to to be a part of it 